Hello again, I am Blunty, and you're watching some Just Cause 3 gameplay, and regulars around here will know that several recent videos I have done have been about a low-end gaming PC rig I built. Amongst those videos was one on how will this relatively paltry power PC humming along in an i3 CPU and Nvidia's lowest-end family member, a GTX 950, could survive in today's world of AAA titles. You're seeing Just Cause 3 run on that system right now, as a matter of fact, it has to have all the settings turned all the way down to low to run smoothly, but as you can see, it can and does play nicely. But not as nicely as it does on my main rig, which is much more powerful, where I can turn all of things all the way up. Hooray! Anyway, one of the questions I got a few times in relation to the low-end Steam Machine-based build was how well Steam streaming works. Now, if you don't know, Steam has a built-in function that will let a game run on a powerful rig, so you can turn all the nice things on, but then stream that gameplay and control input in real time to another machine, likely a lower-powered one that can't run the game as well, or even at all, on its own. So what you're seeing now is a side-by-side -side split screen of the same gameplay recorded at the same time. On the left, you're seeing what it looks like on the powerhouse system, and on the right, what it looks like on the low-end system once Steam has streamed it there. And all of this is happening in ideal conditions over a wired local Ethernet connection with zero other significant activity going on across the network. And as you can see, it's not exactly ideal, is it? Steam's video compression algorithms are highly aggressive and not particularly clean. Look to the sky, for example, and it's easiest to see the severe macro blocking that can go on. But the game is actually quite playable, and the controller input on the low-end machine itself feels responsive and clean, although it did seem to occasionally just not register inputs completely reliably. You may catch glimpses of a stop-start kind of running animation in some of this footage, in fact, and that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm actually just pushing on the thumbstick to try and run smoothly in one direction, but somewhere along the line, Steam's streaming functionality is balking up the control feed, resulting in stuttery input for some reason. Now, it only happened a couple of times, but it could certainly be quite detrimental if it happens at a crucial moment in gameplay. So anyway, not exactly blown away by Steam's streaming, I decided to compare it to NVIDIA's. Now, some of you may not even be aware of this feature yet, as it's pretty new and only available with the GeForce Experience beta drivers right now. And as such, the feature itself, of course, is in beta. But what it does is let you stream gameplay from one computer to another. And you can do this in one of two ways. You can do it sort of a one-to-one -one private Twitch stream kind of thing, so your friend or whatnot can watch your gameplay, maybe give you some advice if they're better at the game than you are and stuff. But you can also let the computer at the other end take full control of the game as if it was running on their system, essentially doing the same thing as Steam's streaming feature. Again, like I said, it's still in beta, but it's already working pretty well. Right now, though, it caps out at 720p for the stream, regardless of what kind of bandwidth you're dealing with, even a local Ethernet connection like I was using. So sadly, there is a resolution sacrifice here, and as you can see for yourself, it drops a few frames here and there. But it's certainly playable, and I did find it superior to Steam's streaming in a couple of very key ways. For a start, it uses the onboard H.264 encoders built into NVIDIA's graphics card hardware, so the video can compression is a lot smoother and a lot cleaner with far fewer artifacts and macro blocking and the ugly stuff that happens in Steam. Additionally, the controller input, unlike on my Steam stream experience, was in fact flawless, smooth, lovely, excellent. Now, neither experience is ideal as far as I'm concerned. Naturally, local play will always be the superior option, even if I have to run with lower settings on the little machine. But the nice thing is, both these options will work even if you're streaming to a non-gaming focused PC, or even a derpy little laptop, even a Mac. But between the two options, I will be keeping a closer eye on the NVIDIA share function. I think it has the potential to be very good indeed. As it progresses through its beta stage, the only thing that's going to happen here is it will get better and better. Plus, it's not tied to the Steam client, so that's nice. It just works through a simple little tiny browser plugin. Super easy. So yeah, there you go. I'll just let this stuff run so you can squint at it without me babbling in your ear. <laughs> Please do the thing where you pop an opinion in my down below areas and tap the disembodied hand gesturing positively to show your approval for the video I have presented to you today. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I am Blunty and I will catch you next time.